Judge not, lest ye be judged. You've probably heard that said so many times, and we say, oh, it's wrong to judge, but, but judging isn't the bad thing. It's the way, we, um, the way we tend to put ourselves in the position of God uh, that gets us in trouble. In the Apostles' Creed, it says that uh, of Jesus, he was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. From thence he shall come to judge the living, the quick, and the dead. And so we see that uh, judgment uh, in the wrong hands, in your hands or mine, uh, that can be a problem. That is a problem, and that leads us to difficult things. It leads us to sin. It leads us into a bad place. But Jesus is able to judge. Jesus is the one who can judge. Jesus, who knew no sin. Jesus, who is the very uh, incarnation of God. Jesus, who has uh, come to live among us, to teach us, to heal us, to, uh, to impress us with his miracles, to reveal the character of God to us. This Jesus who was crucified so that you and I could have our sins forgiven and have hope for life everlasting in the world to come. This Jesus who has ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God. Do you remember in Mark's gospel in the, in the 10th chapter, how James and John try to get their way into Jesus? They want to sit at the, the best seats. They want to sit at the right hand and one at the left. And, and some of the gospels even say how they, they brought their mother along to, to try to influence Jesus. Um, well, this Jesus, they wanted to be close to the judgment seat, but let me just caution you that that's a, that's a difficult place to be. As some people like to say, judging or being God, that's above my pay grade. And so we hear that Jesus, uh, he shall from thence, from that seat, uh, at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there, he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. And let me just share a couple of scripture passages with you from the New Revised Standard Version, which, uh, which give credence to this role that Jesus plays in the eternal realm. In John's Gospel, in the fifth chapter, verse 22 says, The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son. The Father's not anxious to judge, but has given that right to the Son. The Son, of course, being Jesus, our Savior and Lord. The Father in heaven has given the position, the authority, the, the task of judging to the Son. And it's that Son who, who I believe is gonna one day put his arm around you and me when we stand before our Heavenly Father. And Jesus is gonna say, this one I knew, this one loved me, this one I died for. And, and so I, I just, uh, well, I, I rejoice in that good news. And we also hear uh, from Paul writing to the Thessalonians in 2 Thessalonians in the first chapter, he says, this is evidence of the righteous judgment of God and is intended to make you worthy of the kingdom of God. So all of this is taking place to make you worthy of the coming kingdom for which you are also suffering. For it is indeed just of God to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to give relief to the afflicted as well as to us. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus, these will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, separated from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. When he comes to be glorified by his saints and to be marveled at on that day among all who, ha who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. Paul laying out to the Thessalonians and to you and I that this Jesus has the right to judge. You know, there have been many times in my life where somebody would just cry out, all I want is justice. And, and I always cringe when I hear that because they're thinking of human justice. And because quite honestly, if we were to receive justice, godly justice, if we were to receive what is just and due to us, well, then we would all go to hell. But because of the grace of God, because of the love that God extends to us, we have hope for more. 
but there is still a judgment. Uh, as we have been talking uh, in the month of November in church uh, from Matthew 25, uh, the, when it talks about the, the five wise and the five foolish maidens, it says, some will be shut out and left in the dark where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And it goes on to continue in the next two parables uh, that are shared in that 25th chapter. Friends, I just want you to know that I do believe there's going to be a judgment someday. I do believe that, that God will... Uh, will inflict judgment upon all of us. And that for those who do not know and love Jesus, for those who do not have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, for those of us who have not put our trust in a personal and saving relationship with Jesus, there is the very real possibility that we will, you, me, whoever, could be uh, judged to a Christless eternity, to hell. If it were not so, I would have no passion for sharing the gospel. If it were not so, we would have no urgency about telling others of the love of God, of the grace extended to us, of the power of what Jesus did on the cross. There will be a judgment. We don't want to make too much of it because, because it's not going to be for you and me if we know and love Jesus. But, but don't ever overlook the judgment and don't ever overlook the eternal consequences. For this Jesus, as we say, this Jesus uh, who sits at the right hand of God, from there he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. From that seat next to God, he will come to judge the living and the dead. Friends, may God judge you worthy. May God uh, receive you with open arms. May Jesus, uh, may his blood wash you clean. And may God be with you till we meet again.